that is a really tight spot. It's probably my least favorite aspect of this whole deal. Putting into a tight slipway like we have to at Cracker Boy and Riviera Beach. They say that they haul boats out to 26 feet wide. We are 25 feet. literally and figuratively. There's a cold front coming. It arrives tomorrow night. And the wind should be howling pretty good. But the other storm is the flurry of activity that's gonna happen starting next week. It's all coming our way. Gotta ride that, ride that wave. So before the wave gets here, it's time to Take a gander at the world from the half deck of clarity. Drink some coffee. Talk about the meaning of life. Out there, my friends, is a pretty strong south wind. We're anchored behind this itty bitty little island off Fort Pierce. It's a little itty bitty island. <laughs> little uh, chop coming around. Whoa, I'm getting blown around. Uh, so far the winds have been up to uh, 34 knots and uh, the cold front's still uh, quite a ways away so this could be a bit of an exciting night. The front gets in here about 1 in the morning I believe. Oh, nice strong front coming through here. The uh, wind's been very gusty. There comes the wind shift and swung around. Ghosts in the machine. Our oil pressure indicator is pegged high. And I don't know why. All right, we are leaving Fort Pierce. It got a little chilly, had to get those valleys out again. All right, we're making our last little stretch down to Riviera Beach, West Palm Beach, where we're gonna haul the boat. And once again, we're sailing pretty deep. The wind's coming from our 125 to 130. And we've got just the jib up. I call this the Lamo setup. Really what we should be doing if we wanted to make the fastest passage time would be to get the main up at our first or second reef point and set up the cruising spinnaker. A couple reasons I'm not doing that. First of all, this is only about a 45 mile trip. It's really not that long a trip. And I'm also expecting the winds to come around from the side later on today. And that cruising spinnaker may actually be a little too big for the wind that we've got. Yeah, see, uh, now we are close reaching. We are going upwind. And this is a case where I want that leech to be closed up. I want that roach pulled taut, and I want the power being generated all the way up the backside of the sail when we're going upwind like this. In fact, this is about as close as we usually sail on clarity. We've got the wind at about 55 degrees apparent. Uh, any closer than that, we get down to like 50 degrees and the boat starts sliding sideways. Uh, I'll take a look behind us and take a look at our wake. Now if the wake is kind of at a weird angle to the boat, that's uh, we know that the boat is sliding, making leeway. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but 
Our wake right now is maybe at a five degree angle to our direction of travel. So yeah, we're pinching up here and we're starting to slide a little bit. And uh, again, without dagger boards, with these fixed keels that go down uh, four feet or four and a half feet, we just can't get it any tighter. We can't go uh, much closer to the wind without the boat making a lot of leeway. But yeah, again, run the traveler down when you're going upwind. It's so crazy to see all these buildings right up against the ocean. It actually looks like the you can see the erosion. And it makes me wonder like, are there people even living in there? Are they full? Who are they? I imagine that each and every window, there's somebody in the window looking out at us saying, I wish I was with those guys. This is how I tell the temperature. <laughs> the coconut oil has liquefied. I'm a wee bit nervous. We have one, two, three, four, five, five fenders on board. But I have an idea. We have an old paddle board that slowly leaks air. And I bet that could work as a giant fender. Let's see. Right, so this is either going to be an example of Nick Giver brilliance or it's going to be an example of McGruber stupidity. We don't have enough fenders on this boat and to get to the haul out or get into the well tomorrow it's going to be a very very tight fit. Our boat's 25 feet wide and it looks to me like this haul out well is maybe 26 feet and we'll see how this works. I see us entering the slip perfectly being raised up onto the hard oh. <laughs> Namaste it's always good to have a little humor on board if possible as you do something pretty scary like docking your boat uh, with eight inches to spare. So winds were definitely higher than we had wanted. They were 15 to 18 knots out of the east, southeast, which meant that they were going to be going the same direction as the current, which was still coming in when we pulled up our anchor at 830. Our plan was to just go scope things out and get a feel for everything, all the conditions, and wait for the actual slack tide. But that's when Riviera Beach called us because they saw us out front and said, hey, the guys are ready for you, come on in. And we just had to go for it. So <laughs> it was intense. Just a little shot of reverse on the starboard engine and we barely squeaked by. I mean, we're talking inches or centimeters. That could have been a really expensive miscalculation right there. Okay. Oh my god. Harrowing. What? You killed it. Wow. I just gotta shut the true holes now.
Feels good. That was uh, that was a little hair raising. A little bit of churrant in there. Oh my god, that was not slack. Nah. But they try and get two boats in, two boats out, you yeah. know, each time, so. All right, we got a spot right next to the office. And uh, we are almost delivered to our slip. Okay, so we might have just had a minor disaster. So we forgot to shut the back door and they've been power washing it now for at least 15 minutes. So Nick is rushing back to get it closed, but the damage may have already been done. So tell me about the water spray in the boat. Oh, well, I was so excited to get off the boat that I forgot to close the back door. So they're power washing the boat and uh, no spray got inside. How do you feel now? I'm ready for a beer. <laughs> I don't even drink. You gonna start drinking? Nothing like a little cross current and a bit of wind to get the heart beating, oh pumping. My God. There was not a lot of room in there. I'd say there was like eight inches. And one of the guys said that the paddle board actually saved us. I don't know if he was just being nice, but uh, yeah, evidently that paddleboard took took a little bit of abuse coming in. Come on, I think it's Petey. Hi. Oh. Where are you, Where going? Are you going? You scared of the camera? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll get some. Sure you like that dead cat? Are hey, you scared of this, Pete? Well, it's just a dead the, cat. Uh, yeah. That works. <laughs> You get such a nice coat. Yes, you do. You get such a nice coat. <laughs> oh, you got him. Yeah. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is early. It is just after five. Megan's still in bed. Uh, I'm aboard Clarity on the hard here at Cracker Boy Boat Works. Uh, just wanted to do a little wrap up and a tease for what's coming next week. This has been one of the best haul outs we've had in a long time in terms of how productive it's been. We're getting so much done. And one really dramatic thing that we're doing is that we are completely remaking the outside of Clarity. We're doing a, a wrap on the boat and the transformation is really, really amazing. So we're gonna show you all those details. We're gonna talk about the other stuff that we do with a typical haul out and uh, the Miami Boat Show starts today. We're gonna go tomorrow, but we'll have lots to show you with that coming up with next week's episode. So just once again, wanna say thank you so much for your time. Um, we love having you along with us. Thank you for your subscriptions, and we'll see you next time. All right, I'm going to get some coffee and get on it.